Okay, this will cover the brain. Uh, the brain has four parts to it, the cerebral hemisphere, the diencephalon, the brain stem, and the cerebellum. Okay, here we're seeing a brain at 13 weeks gestation, and over here on the right side is the adult brain. They've color-coded it for you so you can see the different parts that we just listed. Uh, the gold that you see is the cerebrum, and then we have the diencephalon, that purple middle part, and then this green is the brain stem, and then the red would be the cerebellum. Okay, in a cadaver brain, uh, this is a cross-section, so uh, we're looking at the right lobe here, so this brain has been split down the middle in the sagittal plane and we're looking at the lateral view well it's a medial view uh, so medial to lateral of the right hemisphere um, and you're seeing the uh, the diencephalon area the brain stem there's the cerebellum and the bulk of it is the cerebrum Okay, we do have uh, two cerebral hemispheres, a right and left cerebral hemispheres. Collectively, all together, we call it the cerebrum. Not to be confused with X-Men, Professor Xavier's cerebro machine, named after brain stuff. He would wear that helmet and his brain was connected to everything, thus the name cerebro. Uh, it is considered the most superior part of the brain. It's the largest of the brain structures. It contains the gyri, and the gyri are separated by the sulcus. Deeper grooves are called fissures, which will separate larger regions of the brain. For example, the longitudinal fissure, which separates the two hemispheres. And then the cerebrum's lobes are named after the cranial bones that they are near. Okay, now let's go back to the gyri and sulcus. So here, the, th the thicker part, so like this part here, that's the gyri or gyrus, okay? And then the dark parts are the sulcus, the folds that uh, separate the, uh, the gyri, okay? Okay, up here um, you're seeing the red, which denotes motor, the blue, which denotes sensory. And um, we're going to visit these terms in more detail soon the precentral gyrus, and the postcentral gyrus, and central sulcus. Okay, those will be important structures. The cerebrum is responsible for speech, memory, logical response, emotional response, uh, consciousness, interpretation of sensation, voluntary movement. Uh, this is not an exhaustive list, but um, I do want you to know these as a function of the cerebrum. Okay, so going back to that somatosensory area in the postcentral gyrus, which is this postcentral gyrus, okay, somatosensory and postcentral gyrus. So it's located in the parietal area, so let's go back, okay, there's the parietal lobe, as you can see the postcentral gyrus, postcentral, meaning behind the central sulcus, there's the central sulcus right there. So it's behind it, so they call it the postcentral gyrus. So it's located in the parietal area, it lies posterior to the central sulcus. Afferent sensory input goes here. Okay, let's go back. Here's what that means. Here's the body. You have information coming up through the cord and it hits the postcentral gyrus. Sensory input. 
and eventually it will have a motor output. Okay, so we'll talk about that in a second. So because of sensory input, you recognize all sensory stuff like pain, cold, or temperature, uh, light touch, deep touch, etc. Okay, so all the sensory goes into that postcentral gyrus area based on the homunculus spatial map of the brain, which is this. Okay, so in that medial part, it'll be genitals up here in the more superior medial lower extremity and then as we move it goes to upper extremity the side of the brain alright so this area would be more um, like if you were to put your hands over the parietal lobe it would be touching roughly that area so you're getting fingers face okay um, pharynx, abdomen, and so forth. Okay, so this is the spatial map of sensory, and here's your spatial, uh, spatial map of motor. Um, now, also keep in mind that both sensory and motor are on this, they, they overlap each other. They have just removed the blue on this side and removed the red on this side, so it's not so busy. Okay, here you're seeing the um, the central sulcus and then the post central gyrus which is the blue and then the pre central which is the red all right so that's the homunculus okay the information travels afferently from body to brain so it travels via the posterior column the fasciculus gracilis and fasciculus cuneatus, which is tactile. This is a fancy word for non-pain, non-temperature sensory feeling. So tactile. Okay. Uh, from the lower extremity and lower trunk, from the fasciculus gracilis, and from the fasciculus cuneatus, it's tactile from the upper extremity and upper trunk. Now, if that just blew your mind and you're like, what the heck are you talking about? We're going to draw a map of this later, so we're going to dive into this in more detail, and I'll break it down um, on another lecture slide. Okay. Now we also have the anterior lateral system. Now that's if you look at a cross section of the spinal cord with the gray matter. Okay, that we looked at earlier. Uh, this is the posterior aspect, anterior aspect anterior lateral system so that puts it about there anterior and lateral okay and again we'll uh, dive in deep to that later but right now as quick version the anterior lateral system is the spinothalamic tract which is responsible for conscious perception of pain the spinal reticular tract which is 